Silk, the story of India's magic fabric. Silk Mark was introduced by the Ministry of Textiles, Government of India, aiming at the twin objectives of consumer protection and generic promotion of silk in India. A family is shopping for silk, the one material that is and has been loved from generation to generation by us for all our magical moments. From religious festivals to joyous events, no Indian celebration is complete without this beautiful fabric and being natural, silk is comfortable and healthy to wear. Grandma, where does this come from? I don't know, sweetie. Um, I think it's from an insect. No, it's from a Chinese plant. It's from a silkworm, baby. But few know the magnificent story of silk. Come with us on a wonderful journey. It all starts with a few acres of fertile soil. This is the beginning of sericulture or raising of silkworms to produce silk. Meet Shivakumar, who first switched from traditional crops to sericulture six years ago. He now grows mulberry plants and rears silkworms. The mulberry gardens are carefully maintained, ensuring that only the healthiest cuttings are planted, that they receive enough water and fertilizer and are protected from pests. But what does the mulberry plant have to do with silk? Quite simply, around 90% of the silk produced in India is mulberry silk, produced by silkworms that feed exclusively on mulberry leaves. Let's get to the heart of the matter, the production of a truly magical fabric. There are four types of silk, mulberry, eri, tassar and muga. And India is the only country that produces all of them. Eri, tassar and muga are wild silks, produced in very limited quantities. These are also pure silks. Only the mulberry silkworm produces enough silk to somewhat meet the huge Indian and international demand. There are four stages in the life of the silkworm. Egg, larva, pupa and adult silk moth. We'll begin at the adult stage. Here at a government seed center, the practice of sericulture begins with amazing attention to detail. The adult mulberry silk moths are crossbred to ensure health, more quantity of silk and disease resistance. After mating, the female lays approximately 500 eggs. The laying of one female moth is called a seed. In the eggs, new life is waiting to begin. When the eggs are at the blue stage, they are ready to hatch. Silkworms weighing just a gram or two begin to emerge and immediately begin to eat the fresh mulberry leaves. Over the next 25 days, they will put on 10,000 times their weight. At the government seed center, the little silkworms are fed and tended until after their second molting or shedding of the skin. The silkworms are then distributed to the surrounding farmers to be reared till the fourth molt. After this, they will begin the next stage of their lives, silk spinning. One day, the silkworms refuse to eat anymore. They just move their heads in the shape of an eight. They are now ready to spin silk. Special spinning racks called chandrike are used to encourage the silkworms to spin their cocoons properly. Using the stores of food it has eaten, the silkworm produces silk filaments from two glands to form a continuous thread which encases the silkworm in a shell called a cocoon. This cocoon is the basis of silk. For 10 days, the worm goes through its pupa stage in the cocoon to become a moth. 
Before the moths emerge, the cocoons must be taken to market. But we will return to this soon. We give some of the best seeds to special rarers who take special care of them till they spin their cocoons. They return the cocoons to us and this is from where we get the next generations of eggs or seeds. And so it begins again, the magical life cycle that blesses us with a magical fabric. But our story is not yet over. This is a government cocoon market where Shivkumar will bring his cocoons. This is one of the largest cocoon markets in the world. A sample of Shukumar's cocoons is sorted to find out the percentage of good ones. They are weighed with the pupa inside and again without the pupa to find out how much of silk is contained. The approximate length is checked. The main object of this cocoon testing center. All these tests are done for the benefit of the rarers and reelers, so that the quality of the batch is clear and a fair price agreeable to both parties can be fixed. Everyone benefits. And so, this son of the soil helps bring silk to our silk-loving country while making a good living out of it. We have taken a journey from soil to cocoon. But what follows is even more interesting. How does the humble cocoon become the wonderful fabric that we wear on all our festive occasions? This is an automatic silk reeling unit that was set up with assistance from the Central Silk Board. This is one of the places where cocoons are made into raw silk that can be reeled and silk thread that can be woven into fabric. First, the cocoons are dried to remove excess moisture. They are then boiled to get rid of the exterior fluff or floss and loosen the silk filament. Next, the cocoons are placed in a reeling machine where the filaments from a number of cocoons are reeled into a single continuous strand. Depending on the quality of the cocoons used, this strand may measure from 600 to 1,200 meters. That's over one kilometer of silk from a single cocoon. Also, based on the number of cocoons used for one reel, the strength and weight of the silk fabric is determined. Doubling is the process whereby two silk strands are joined together to make it ready for twisting. The strands are then twisted to give more strength. Depending on the number of strands used in the twisting, the fabric made from them is called as one ply, two ply and so on. Now comes an even more exciting step in our journey from soil to silk. The process by which the faint colors of Indian silk are fixed into the skeins of thread themselves. The silk is prepared for dyeing by first dipping in a soap bath to remove the gum from the yarn. It is dipped in a boiling dye solution. Care is taken to ensure that every strand of every skein is completely soaked in the solution. The time taken for the dyeing process depends on the brightness of color specified by the master dyer. The skeins are then washed again and are now ready for the final part of the journey, weaving.
a glance at the working of a power loom. And then we meet Nageshwara Rao, master weaver from a long line of hand weavers of silk, who is happy to show us his loom. It is an extensive operation employing 400 weavers from apprentice to master levels. It's a labor of love and dedication as well as a skilled display of craftsmanship. As the product emerges day after painstaking day, we begin to understand why silk is so valued and hand-woven silk is treasured above all else. An exotic silk sari may take weeks to weave, depending on the intricacy of the design. No wonder that, after so long on the loom, a finished sari is handled with the utmost care. The demand for silk saris is great, but at no point do we lower our quality standards. We use only the best quality silk thread. All saris that come from my looms are genuine silk without any mix of other fibers like polyester or cotton. It's all pure silk. And that's why I am authorized to use the silk mark. From Nageshwar Rao's facility and hundreds of thousands of others across the country, silk saris and fabrics make their way to retailers all over India. From all over they come to delight the heart and grace every celebration. Let's take a look at some of the gorgeous silks of India. Romantic Maharani Saris, the dazzling Nakshi Kanta of Bengal, the grandiose Garcholas of Gujarat, an array of Banarasi brocades, tantalizing Tassa varieties, the ceremonial Banarasi Khatan Saris, wedding Saris of Kanchipuram, elegant Kashmiri Chinons, plain and printed, traditional Narayan pet saris, Kosa lightweight casual saris, innovative Dupion saris, the majestic Matka range of saris, the royal prince of Murshidabad and the magnificent Balucheris of Bengal. No wonder Indian silks are renowned across the world. Sericulture in India is now poised to take the next big leap forward and Silk Mark Organization of India contributes its expertise and verification process every step of the way. All this so that you can be completely assured that the silk you buy is nothing but pure silk. Today, pure silks produced across the country are authenticated by Silk Mark Organization of India an initiative of Central Silk Board, Ministry of Textiles, Government of India. From fashion textiles to home furnishings and upholstery, from made-ups to carpets and rugs, every product that bears the silk mark tag is recognized by customers across the country as a genuine pure silk product. How do I know if all this is really pure silk? Good question, ma'am. In fact, there's something known as flame test. It's a very simple test. But then I'm somewhat destructive. And nobody would like to try it out at any shop. Hmm. If you burn a thread and it emits smell of burnt hair, the thread is genuine. I want only pure silks, no blends. Simple, ma'am. Look for the silk mark tag with the hologram. It's as simple as that. So, it's like ag mark for food and hallmark for gold. Exactly, sir. Silk mark for silk. Remember, 
Every time you purchase a silk product, a great part of what you spend goes back to society. You are thus truly contributing to the livelihood, welfare and upliftment of all the lakhs of farmers, rearers, reelers, dyers and weavers. All those for whom it is a profession and passion to produce silk, India's magic fabric. I will take these silk mark sarees. Good choice, ma'am. Please do come again. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.